Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Welcome to Lesson 18. This is Graphing Cubic, Square Root, and Cube Root Functions. So Classwork Opening Exercise asks us to evaluate some squares and square roots. Um, let's do a quick review here. The reason I have a square over here is because when it says evaluate x squared when x equals 7, what they're saying is that we have a square with side lengths of 7. And when it says evaluate x squared, that means what is the area of this square? So when a square has side length 7, this is actually saying what's the area of a square with side length 7? And we know the area is base times height, or length times width, or side times side in this case. And therefore, to evaluate x squared when x is 7, you would just simply take 7 times 7, or 7 squared, and that is 49. Okay. But now, on number, or part B, number B, <laughs> um, it is telling us that the square root of x, it says find the square root of x when x equals 81. So what they're saying here now is they're giving us the area of the square and they're asking what the side length is. So the square root is asking, if you have this area, what is the length of one side? So what times itself is 81? So the square root of 81, in other words, the area of the square is 81. What is the length of its side? And it is 9. Because 9 times 9 is 81, or 9 squared is 81. Okay, hopefully that's a little clearer. And then it would be the same here, except a cube. Okay, so now when we're going into x cubed, it's a three-dimensional figure. And so what this means is, when it says to evaluate x cubed when x equals 5, they're saying you have a cube and the side lengths are all 5. So this is 5, and this altitude over here, I'll put it over here so it's less confusing, is 5. So the volume is what it's asking for. So this is basically saying, what is the volume of a cube when its side length is 5? So you know that the volume is length times width times height, or 5 cubed. So x cubed, evaluate when x is 5, would be 5 cubed, which is 5 times 5, which is 25 times another 5 is 125. So the volume of this cube is 125 when one side length is 5, since all sides are equal. So then when we get down to cube root of x, when x equals 27, what they're saying is the volume of this cube is 27. Okay, so I'd say v equals 27. What is one length of, what is the side length all the way around? So what we're going to do is take the cube root of 27, and what times itself? 3 times is 27. Well, 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27, so the cube root of 27 is 3. So one side length equals 3. So this is 3, 3, 3, giving us a volume of 27. Okay, Exploratory Challenge says, use your graphing calculator to create a data table for the functions y equals x squared and y equals the square root of x for a variety of x values. Use both negative and positive numbers and round decimal answers to the nearest hundredth. So what I'm going to do is um, go to y equals and clear all these from a previous lesson. Okay, and I'm going to put the equation y equals, see the y equals, I'm going to put x squared in there and hit enter. And then I'm going to do the square root of x. So I'm going to put the square root of x into y equals there. Then I'm just going to go to my table. Table is in blue, so that means use the blue button to get to that command. Second, graph will give me my table. Now, it said to use positive and negative numbers, so I'm just going to make some up. How about negative 8? Enter. Negative 4? Enter. 2? Enter. 7? Enter. Is that enough? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I want one more. How about 13? Enter. 
Okay. So, I'm going to write these in here. Negative 8, negative 4. Okay. And let's see. 2, 7, and 13. Did I follow the directions? Use both negative and positive numbers. Round decimal answers to the nearest hundred. Negative 8 squared, well the answer is right here, 64. Negative 4 squared is 16. 2 squared is 4. 7 squared is 49. And 13 squared is 169. That's pretty simple. You can do that in our head actually, but when you get to square roots of non-perfect uh, squares, then it gets a little tricky. Now notice your calculator says error, okay? In Algebra 1, we don't have the information yet to determine what a square root of a negative is. There is a value for it, but at this time, if I go to mode in my calculator, okay, and you go right to here, it says real. So these are real numbers. Well, negative 8, the square root of negative 8 is not real. It's imaginary, so we'd have to switch our calculator to here, but we're not getting into that yet. So let's go back to our table. And since error, um, I'm just going to say um, non-real. Okay. Okay, you didn't make an error. You can take the square root of a negative, it's just not going to be a real number. So negative 4 again says error, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put error, I'm going to put non-real. Non-real answer. Uh, this square root now says round to the nearest hundred, two decimal places. 1.414 would round to 1.41. And 2.645 would round to 2.65. And 3.605 would round to 3.61. Okay, so there's just a few examples there. You didn't have to use these same numbers, but anyhow. And if I plug 0 in, 0 squared is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0, so that would work as well. Okay, page 2 brings us to Exploratory Challenge 2, and it says to create a graph of y equals x squared and y equals the square root of x on the same set of axes, which I put in here. So in order to do this, I am going to use my calculator, and I'm not going to cheat and look at the graph. I'm going to practice plotting points, but I'm going to use the table. So if I want some values for a function called x squared, I'll make that y1. And then if I want a function for the square root of x, I'll make that y2. Okay, so now when I hit second graph, for my table, and here's my table, and I can plug some values in. So I'm going to graph y equals x squared in red, and I'm going to start, and so we're not going to focus on y2 now. These are going to be the values for the square root function, and these are the values for the function x squared. So I'm going to start with 0, and I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to plot the point 0, 0, right here. And then I'm going to plug in 1 and hit enter. And 1 squared is 1. And I'm going to keep doing this. 2, enter. 2 squared is 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 is here. 3 squared is 9. So over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'll do one more. 4, enter is 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, and here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so now when I work the other side, I'm going to put negative 1 in, and negative 1 squared is also 1. So negative squared is 1, negative 1 squared. And then negative 2, I'm only going to do a couple of these to show you what's going on. 4, negative 2, 4. So as you can see, a quadratic is symmetric about the vertex, or the axis of symmetry. So this is 1 away, 2, 2, so this will be 3, 1, 2, 3. So it would be here, so negative 3 squared is 9. And 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4 squared is positive 16. I'm not going to draw the line, because it's hard to draw with this pen. Um, 
So there's the quadratic or the parabola. So now when I look at these same values, my y2 is my square root function. So 0, square root of 0 is 0. I'll do that in red. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is 1.414, so over 2. 1, 2. 1. 4 is not quite 1 and a half, so I'll put the dot there. Square root of 3 is 1.7. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1. 7, 1 and 3 quarters, not quite. 1.7. Okay, and then the square root of 4 is 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, go up here, and there's 2. So as you can see, this is curving up. This might be a little higher to make it look better, okay? And then I'm just going to do one more. I know the square root of 9 is 3. So if I plug in 9, enter, the square root of 9 is 3. Go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Up 1, 2, 3 is right here. So there you see my function going this way. Now if I go to my calculator now and look at the graph, there's the parabola, there's the square root function, but they aren't showing the negatives because as you saw in the table it said error, you can't take the square root of the negative, so they don't plot this side. But it would be the parabola reflected across the line y equals x. So if I go down here and just hit x, I'm going to draw a line y equals x, slope of 1, y intercept of 0, and as you can see, this point would reflect across to here. And if I zoom a square, because this is a, think of it as a big screen TV, it's longer than it is wide, you have to zoom square so that you can see that it's symmetric. Just give it a moment. And I think it failed on me, so let's turn my calculator back on and hit graph again. Okay, so there it is, and now I'll try zoom square one more time. Hopefully it can handle the function. There we go, and there's that, and there's that, and it does look more symmetric now. Okay, so there you have it. So, on to Exploratory Challenge 3. It says to create a data table for y equals x cubed and y equals the cubed root of x with these values. So I'll go to my calculator, go to y equals, clear, 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 and go back up to x to the power of 3. And math, cube root is the fourth command, and x. And hit second graph. And I'll start over with the values they asked us to do. Negative 8 negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 8. Okay, so I'll just enter these values. I'll pause the video to save some time. Okay, so there's the data that I entered from the calculator over to here, rounding to the nearest 100. Okay, so now we want to graph both of the functions on the same set of axes, rounding the decimal answers to the nearest hundred. Okay, so here we go. So since these values are really large, this would really be difficult to graph on this little grid here. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to graph the 500s. I'll just graph from negative 8 to 8, negative 1.26 to 1.26. Okay, so I drew a coordinate plane here. <clears throat> I have my y-axis and I have my x-axis. And I'll graph x cubed in red. So it's negative 2, negative 8, right here. And then it is negative 1, negative 1. So I'm just plotting this x and this y. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0 is the origin. 1, 1, and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's curving like so. Now I switch to green for this one, and it's negative 8. Oh, 
Okay, I made a mistake here. Hello. Negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 2. Wait, I did not make a mistake. I'm looking at the wrong numbers. I'm not, we're doing negative 8. Well, I could on this one, but I didn't on this one. I started at negative 2, negative 8. So if I start at negative 2, it's negative 1.26. Okay, my fault. My apologies. So it's negative 2, negative 1.26. Negative 2, negative 1, and just a smidgen more. 1 and a quarter. Negative 1, negative 1 is right on that dot there. 0, 0 is right here. 1, 1 is right here. And 2, 1.26. 2, 6 is right here, but if I did plot the negative 8, negative 2, it would be here. And if I plotted the 8, 2, it would be here. So this is curving up and around like so, and the red one is coming up like this. So if I go to my calculator, Okay, so to get a clearer view of this, because I'm not going to draw the lines, like I said, it's tough to draw with this, I will go to the graph and I'll hit graph. Okay, so here's what it looks like here. Now again, if I draw the equation y equals x, then you see that the two functions reflect across that. Okay, so they're crisscrossing. So this function here is the cube root of x, and the one that's coming from down here and turning and then going up here is x cubed. Okay, page three brings us to the end of the lesson. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.